Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you're watching the video from the county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, I've always told you on this particular platform that in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence. And that everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Nothing in politics just happened for the sake of it. William Samoya Raputo, the president of the Republic of Kenya, today appointed Henry Rotich, a former cabinet secretary for Treasury, who was fired from office of a corruption allegation by the former president Uhuru Muge Kenyatta as his advisor on economic affairs, specifically on fiscal affairs and budget policy. Why do you think William Ruto appointed Henry Rotich? For us to understand that, let me just take you to Twitter a bit. Because I normally love going to Twitter to just see what is trending. If you go to Twitter right now, the first item on the trending list is Vasco Danganya. Vasco Danganya is the new name which Kenyans have given William Samuel Arab Ruto. You all know Vasco da Gama. <laughs> you can now relate why Kenyans are calling Ruto Vasco Danganya. The second item on, number, on the trend list is Kalenjins. Why do you think Kalenjins is trending? Probably because of the appointment of Henry Rotich, who is a Kalenjin, to that position. If you go to item number three, which is very important, which is trending, is David Indy. Why do you think David Indy is trending here? The truth is that appointment of uh, Henry Rotich as William Ruto's economic advisor. <laughs> Kenyans are questioning the role which David Indy will now be playing. Then if you go down there, Kaptengele Dolam Fukon is trending. You go there, you find Itumbi trending. And that trend list can tell you that the appointment of Henry Rotich is significant politically speaking in the Republic of Kenya. It's a day that I will never forget in my life. Actually, two days, including my birthday, which is 23rd July 2019, when we were arrested, and 14 December 2023, uh, which we were acquitted. So two memorable days that I will not forget in my life. The second thing I wanted to say is, um, I think the, the clergy had mentioned, this is what really happened. I want to say that uh, the, the schemas of this thing, and I know them personally, by the way, I know them personally. Uh, some uh, colleagues in the previous government, which uh, I know them very well, uh, I knew how all the whole thing started and how it was turned political. So I know, I know them. When I was saying they have been ashamed permanently, is exactly what I meant. I, I know, I know them by. I will not mention them, uh, definitely, but I know them. But since the clergy has said we forgive and forget, I want to say so. I am I've forgiven them. So in this video, I want us to do a critical analysis. Why William Ruto decided to appoint Henry Rotich, who was uh, sacked in... Uh, January 2020 by Uhuru Kenyatta and of course the courts acquitted him just in December and Willa Ruto has decided to appoint him as an advisor. Do you want to tell me that there were no other Kenyans who could be appointed to that position all along? But before you get into all those details, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. That, that support 
this channel cannot be waited. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, allow me to dive in. And by the way, I've been busy. Yesterday I was in Homa Bay. Uh, today I was in the village. Then I attended some funeral Uko Kano. So I'm a bit also tired. Tomorrow I'll also be out of town. But I'm really trying just to to bring something to you guys like this appointment of uh, head of age and there's another video which i want us to do why udmps are no longer accompanying william ruto to his political activities so maybe after this you can check it but i know it will come very late because this one is also coming a bit late in the night ladies and gentlemen why do you think william ruto appointed henry rotich because there's no way william ruto can just decide to appoint henry rotich who was uh, removed from office because of uh, some uh, scandal Aurora and Kimoren, which was some 63 billion scandal. Aurora and Kimoren scandal is a scandal which really shaped the politics in 2022. And uh, of course we know that by the fact that the, the court acquitted him as a Kenyan, he also deserves this kind of appointment. But the truth of the matter is that currently, William Ruto wanted to be seen to be fighting corruption. And we've seen the courts acquitting most of his friends. And William Ruto is ending up appointing them and is sending wrong signals to majority of Kenyans. But what about Henry Rotich? Because Henry Rotich was at the center of Aurora and Kimoren. Ruto was at the center of Aurora and Kimoren. Remember, William Ruto went to Italy the other day. Why do you think William Ruto went to Italy? There were several reasons why he went, but for me, I always believed that William Ruto went to pursue the issue of Aror and Kimaret. But let us not get into that for now. Let us look at the political objectives where William Ruto decided to appoint Henry Rotich as his advisor on economic affairs. Number one, if you ask me, and I'm 100% sure, and that's why Kalenjins is trending on Twitter on number four. William Ruto needs a reliable hand, an old hand in the Ministry of Finance, the Treasury. When William Ruto made his appointments to the cabinet, when he took over, something was very, very clear that William Ruto ensured that he gave the Kikuyu nation the ministries that he had promised them. And of course, William Ruto also ensured that the Kalenjins, the Kalenjin nation also got the meat, the meaty area of the cabinet. Like, for example, Kefima Morkomen was appointed the Ministry of Transport, which is serious ministry. Chirchir was appointed, David Chirchir was appointed energy. But let us look at finance. You'll realize that in every ministry where William Ruto appointed Akikuyu as a cabinet secretary, the permanent secretary, who is the accounting officer, was a Kalenjin. The Kikuyu nation controls the Ministry of Finance. And you know the Ministry of Finance, the way it's big. Just recently, William Ruto decided to appoint someone out of the, the, the Kikuyu nation as the governor for Central Bank. So the person William Ruto appointed as his eye in the Ministry of Finance is the PS, Chris Kipto. But is Chris Kipto an old hand in the Ministry of Finance? Because William Ruto wants to ensure that the Kalenjin nation are on top of everything. Just look at what they did to Alice Wahome when she was the cabinet secretary. Was it for lands? For water or something? What she did to her? Where she was crying literally about the, the Kalenjin mafia in that ministry. In the Ministry of uh, Finance, from Kibaki era, Uhuru era, the Kikuyus were in full control. So Ruto needs someone like Korir, who was a minister for finance. A minister for finance for over how many years? Almost seven years? It means he understands the operations of the ministry. So it can be a good linkage. It can be a good linkage between Ruto and the ministry. And he can advise Ruto on so many things. In fact, it is always alleged that the person who sneaked most of these scandals in uh, in the country was Henry Rotich, 
through budget budget is where scandals are normally created and Ruto has appointed him as advisor on fiscal and budget policies <laughs> so William Ruto needs a reliable hand an old hand as an advisor someone who can tell him whatever is happening that's number one and that person must come from the Kalenjin nation number two I think the politics of Kimware and Aror or Aror and Kimware Kimware project is here William Ruto is reviving is reviving it remember Uru Kenyatta decided to stall the Aror and Kimware over the alleged corruption scandal Ruto went to Italy and I'm sure Aror was one of the top things there now he's the president he can decide and bring the project to the people there then he will tell them you know Uhuru played politics in this thing but now I've brought it in fact that would be a very big score for William Samuel Araruto if he will fail to bring Aror and Kimware it's going to be backlash on him if you ask me so I'm 100% convinced that Ruto is planning to bring Rotich as part of that wider scheme of playing the Aror and Kimware politics number 3 I think it's also William Ruto's strategy to clip the wings of David Ndi. If David Ndi used to advise William Ruto on economic affairs, then William Ruto even appointed some economic council, a team of economists to advise him. Why would he then go out and pick another person? Why? I'm sure William Ruto is disappointed with this current team. He wants to do away with, it, with them. The only fear he has is the backlash. If William Ruto were to kick D to D out of office, do you think David D will spare him? <laughs> David D will not spare Ruto. He will deal with him perpendicularly. So instead of firing David D, what Ruto is doing is bringing someone. So he will just bypass Ruto. I mean, you will just bypass the VDD, day, just like that, and life will move on. Number four, Ruto is also, for those who've been following him of late, trying to bring back Uhuru Kenyatta appointees. I think he's realized that he made a mistake by firing most of them. So he is bringing some of them back. We are seeing Monita Juma coming in. Several of them are being appointed back. Why do you think he's appointing them back? Maybe he's realized that he needs the continuation or continuity. Apart from that, he also needs people who understand what Uru Kenyatta was doing before. Because he kitu in a car imeshinda ruto. So he's trying to bring them back. And lastly, it could also be a coded message to Kenyans on the fight against corruption. Do you think William Ruto is serious with his fight against corruption? I'm just asking, do you think he's serious? For me, I don't think so. And is communicating to Kenyans that if you are waiting to see us fight corruption, we are going just ingine, not this one. This one here, we are going to just push on and move. And of course, you also remember that this appointment is a slap on the face of Uhuru Munge Kenyatta. Uhuru fired Rotich. Ruto is bringing him back. And I'm sure we, if, uh, if some reservoir will be made, you never know. Rotich might bounce back. Rotich is being rewarded. And I'm looking at the possibility of Ruto preparing Rotich to take over as a governor in one of the counties in the Rift Valley. Where does he come from? Marakwet or where? Yes, that's your next governor if you come from those areas. Ruto is preparing him for the big thing. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.